he's snitching on him. And let's just be real, Dirk, he was really out here chaining his life, like for real. Got his record sealed, like, you know, really out here making the changes, you know what I'm saying? And then all that for half the, the happen, you know, the whole murder for hire, uh, the city taking the key away from him, which I think that was kind of a bit harsh. That hey, look, look, that look. was that that was a bit harsh. So that goes into lead into had a had a little question in mind, like, is the Chicago drill era over? As far as the music and that type of music. Is it over? No. You say no. What? No. They still got ops out there. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but nah, but you know, okay, so when we're looking I'll, I'll say for what's popping, uh -huh. that drill, Chicago drill scene, that little wave is over with for sure. Because okay. right now I feel like that Detroit sound is still massive right now. And so I feel like, you know, if a new artist trying to come out here to latch on to a wave, they're not going to go straight to the Chicago drill type of sound. They're going to go to like a, you know, like a Detroit type of sound before they go straight to a drill. So I feel like the popular drill Chicago sound, for, for sure that's over. But they still pumping that shit out because even when you listen to people from UK and overseas and stuff, mm -hmm. they still, to this day, still sound like that. They, yeah. Like out there, they think that is hip hop. Yeah, that, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but that, that? Yeah, but they not really knowing what's going on over here. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> but I, I feel like you know they still gonna be doing that, but it's not really popular like that. It, it, it's it's watered down. I'm gonna be real. It's watered down. Oh real. yeah, yeah. And then just uh, just everything what a lot of these people have went through. You know, G. Hero saying like you know having a PTSD, the trauma and everything. King Von's death. Fucking Chief Key finally moving away. He said he moved. He literally moved from Chicago to LA. He had to move away from Chicago to stop game banging. Yeah, man. Which is like, which is to me that that is kind of that is kind of crazy. Imagine moving anywhere in your state, moving somewhere around, but you just so active that you can't stay out of something. Right. Point, you had to move a whole state just to. Be, be, be clear. Right. And, 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 and for me, I done been to Chicago, and I ain't going to lie. Chicago's very beautiful. Love Chicago. Y'all literally have the best hot dogs like in the whole US of A. No cap. For real. Ever since I've been down there, I never, when I came back, I literally never, ever ate a hot dog ever again. I'm only the only way I'm eating the glizzy or how y'all young folks call it glizzy. I got to go back to Chicago. But. Peter Steve, the glizzy <laughs> warrior. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, but, um. How hard is it, like, to move from the hood and to live in a suburban area in Chicago? Like, like, like if y'all living in a suburban area in Chicago, I would understand. But if y'all niggas is, yeah, they, some of these, are, they do got the money. I mean, for you to get that money, guess what they doing? Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to get it? So, all right, so I'm about to be in the streets, get this money. Then I might as well go to the suburbs and live over here because I can afford it over there. Then I might as well be in the streets over here every day to get the money to come. And back I don't home. understand. Don't, I don't understand that, you, that you're making. That you're, yeah, work. but you're making records. You're making records. You're making music. Oh, it's no, like once you're at that level, that's different. Yeah, that's, but that's, that's what I'm saying. But you have some of these. Okay, you're making the records. You're making the music. Then you're in the suburbs, but why you keep bringing your ass back down to like O Block no. or the South Side? No, like, once why? You're, once you're at the point where you're making money off of your records, clean money, and then you're going back to the streets, that's the, that's what's backwards right there. That, yeah. like, that infatuation to the street is crazy because I felt like it started burning down once 6 9 did the little snitching and oh, did all that. Yeah, man. And everybody started snitching and then the narrative of the streets being the myth, all that came out. I'm thinking, like, why is people... people Rappers still gravitating toward that. You not? Yeah, you man. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. I don't, I don't understand that though. But I mean, I ain't gonna lie for that little wave that they did have. I ain't gonna bring it. It was solid. It was, it was, it was, it was solid. Live. It was it was solid. And, and and no matter what anybody say, like okay, there were all of these had dope music, but I still hands down high regard. Chief Keith with that Kanye. Fuck, nigga, that's that shit. I don't like. Let me ask you this before we get off that topic. Uh -huh. Do you think that whole drill phase? Do you think that added more to the hip hop culture or took more from us in the black community? <sighs> oh, that's how, a good how, question. How you about that, talk to me about that. Oh man, I think it. I think it took more because once we started realizing and seeing what they were doing, like I went okay. So when first Chief Keep came out that was like kind of like 2012 2013 
I ain't gonna lie, we were still in our 20s around that time, so that was still like fuck shit. Party you know music what, for us. When they yeah. came out, I was still in high school playing football, like about to graduate. Oh so. yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I, like, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed a bit of it. Yeah, no, me too. So like I was in a I was in like at the lounges, the clubs, like hearing this shit. Like yeah, I, yeah, my fuck shit music. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, sure. we all like to turn up in the, in the fuck shit music. Like, there's no no stranger to that. But as I got older and started still listening to this and realizing what these little niggas was doing, I was like, uh, no, y'all kind of, y'all kind of hurting the hip hop community with this one, Birdie. Like, for real, because, and then especially like, God bless the dead, like, you know, King Von, a lot of his music, man, like, you were just talking about just, Spraying on somebody, I'm all like, bro, like, is there like, any like lyrical substance, any storytelling? No, he was a great storyteller. Okay, what was crazy about his storytelling allegedly that shit was an autobiography, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's the reverse of how on some West Coast Ice Cube, um, today was a good day, and he just pretty much telling how a day might have went for him in the rack, <laughs> yeah. The crazy as some of them stories might sound, as animated as they are, a lot of them stories, like on paperwork, were damn near real. Yeah. Now look at the dirt case, and now you're looking at the lyrics and how you talk about the homies around him. It's like them. He was like telling. It was like a real story from beginning to end. So nah, yeah, for the real. The storytelling is still there. They just telling on themselves. Selves, yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and once the hip hop police. Figure that out there because like it oh, took them. It out. Yeah, it took them a long time. Now, yeah. lyrics, now their lyrics is in the courtroom. Room. I'm all like, man, <laughs> I kid you not. I was on YouTube the other day and there was some kid that was in the courtroom that just looked at the kid and said, I'm not going to lie to you. Your music is really dope though, but where you messed up at your lyrics, you were telling on yourself. When I heard that, I was like, oh my it's God. Facts. Right. So I was like, Jesus, man. See, I'm like, they really. Here's my, so like on that topic, here's my whole balance of it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that it gives to the hip hop culture because these young kids, they're so talented on how they put these metaphors together, how they tell their stories, how they put the beat. Like, don't like to look happy, all, 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 all of them, like mm -hmm. dope bodies of work. And right. it, it also gives them an opportunity to get away from drug dealing, gang banging. You're like, okay, I can make money outside the hood. So some people, like Lil Baby, would give up selling drugs to actually pursue a, a career in rap because they actually see a way out other than, you know, uh, sparing your freedom for it. So I see the opportunity that it gives and, like, it helps them grow their creative side in their mind. So I see how it can help the community by giving them another way outside of sports, drugs, and stuff like that. So that's one thing I love about the drill scene in Chicago. It gives them hope and like that. And it gave us a whole drama to add to hip hop when it was kind of dead and stuff like that. So Ooh, it gave hip hop hey. another push. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you cooking right now? So I think that's a lot that that it gave. But what it took away is this the content. You know? So, yeah. And and what definitely will upset know, the real oh, yeah, content yeah. when it came to the net. Yeah. Now you got it infatuated the wrong crowd. Right. Now more people want to kill and do violence. Stuff that was still going to happen. But now it's brought to the UK to innocent kids. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, we're just crazy. I don't know nothing about, about that. Yeah. Talking about sticks, like yeah, yeah, no. Nah. If it wasn't for that, y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. Absolutely <laughs> none at all. And, and and this is too where I even had an issue when it started getting out of control because it definitely it definitely was a balance around that time in Chicago. Like you had that drill though, but you still had people like Chance the Rapper. Yeah, Chance the Rapper, Vic, Vic Mensa, Saba. Lupe. You, yeah, Lupe. A lot of these people, like you know, that were trying to keep the balance over. But and including that these people that we named that we named. And then whenever seeing it getting out of control, why the OGs like twist the Kanye crucial conflict why they didn't step in and tell these young, hey, y'all, hey, y'all gotta chill. Y'all gotta chill. If you notice, if you pay attention to the game bang culture in Chicago, all the OGs and a lot of old gangs like Vice Lords and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they dead and they gone. And yeah. Larry Hoover, yeah. like them, they gone and they yeah. old. These young niggas, they don't be respecting OGs and stuff no more. Yeah, that's yeah. You know what I'm You're saying? Right. So that guidance and stuff, it ain't it ain't there like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Like you know how like the community used to raise like that. Yeah. These young, these, these YNs, right. they think they the OGs coming out right. the gate. They're on a whole nother level. They're so, out here shooting us in skinny jeans. You know? <laughs> you know? And and prime example, look at how many people Wallow didn't talk to before they passed away. OG. 
that's really giving game out there, talking talking to him, and you can see the, their response and their reaction to him talking. They're like, mm, and cool. you know what's so crazy when all that you know, you when all that? that went down with Lil Dirk, I literally went back and watched the episode when Lil Dirk was in there when they were like in that little house, and while I was telling the people around, you gotta protect the money. But what was so crazy? It ended up being one of his childhood friends, like. Like and this is just me. I I can't speak on anybody else. If if I had somebody like that in a position, and they'd be like, okay, uh, Steve, like, like we'll grant you immunity, but if not, you're gonna have to do like fifteen to twenty years. I tell my partner, my partner be like, I'll be like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Then my partner I'm like, cool, I'm gonna have like a good solid four hundred, five hundred thousand waiting on you when you get out. And you know what? Me knowing you, Steve, and some situations you've been in, I know you're not lying. I know for a fact you're not lying. <laughs> I know you're not lying. Yeah, man. I, th- that's just for me. Like that's just how loyal that I that I that I am. And I know if if your actions and your character have been been positive and proving it to me time and time again, yeah, man. It ain't it ain't no issue. Yeah, man. I'm gonna knock I'm gonna knock this out. Yeah, maybe 15, 20 years old, but when I come out. You already gonna take care of me. Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be set up. But some of them, now, like, what, what if it started that way, and then he stopped? Would you get bit, mm. Would you get bitter at any point? Because it seems like that's always a narrative or something. Yeah, some but point. but here's the thing though, and here's the thing though, people people, and and I think this is a problem, not only within our generation but the younger generation. It's it's like that old saying, you can lead the horse to the pond. But it, 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 maybe it might drink the water, and maybe it, it maybe it won't. 